the way it's going. At first glance, this looks like any average summer camp. <laughs> But these teens are an academic elite, the top 1% based on the SAT. As smart as they are, they want to be smarter. So they come here to the Johns Hopkins Center for Talented Youth, or CTY, with alumni like Sergey Brin, who went on to co-found Google. The kids call it nerd camp. Oh, no! oh! For three weeks, six hours a day, they write or do math or design mouse traps, or dissect brains. I think we have a hippocampus, which is really exciting. Challenging, and it's fun, and I like the kids. Sometimes in school, like, if you actually do show off, not a lot of people like that when the other people stand out. Here, all the kids are outstanding. But you have to wonder, will they still be exceptional 10 years from now, or 20 years, even 30? According to Camilla Bembo, the answer is yes. Bembo has studied super high achievers for more than three decades. What we have found in our work is that more is better. More intelligence, that is. Bembo followed the brightest kids who were identified by the Hopkins program. The higher their SAT score at age 12, the more likely a child was to get a PhD from a prestigious university, to earn more money, and to take out patents on new inventions. In fact, the smartest 12-year-olds got advanced degrees nearly as often as students that were already enrolled in graduate school. One of the most impressive kids was Terry Tao, an Australian who made a nearly perfect score on the math SAT when he was just eight years old. By 16, he was at Princeton. By 24, he was a full math professor at UCLA, and this summer, he received a Fields Medal considered the Nobel Prize in mathematics. At age 30, he is a remarkable success story. But he says it was a tough transition. When you're in school, you, 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 you get problems served to you in these little bite-sized pieces, you know, like you, you have these homework assignments, and, and every problem you know there's a solution, and, and you even know where to find the solution and so forth. And as opposed to real life, where it's so much more unfair, right? You, 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 you can get dealt problems, and there might not be a solution, or, you know, or if there is, um, nothing you've learned will let you um, handle it. Bembo says CTY and other programs like it ensure that kids like Terry Tao aren't lost in the shuffle. But a lot of kids have that drive, and you may come out on their own, but their environment, in order to really develop those talents, that environment has to be there to nourish it. It is just so much fun, you don't really think about the work anymore. I want to write children's books because I want books that are real. I want books that can connect to a 12-year-old child. It's kind of annoying with being with all these smart kids because, I mean, I'm used to being the smartest kid around, and now everyone else is just as smart as me. Not all brilliant adults were overachieving kids. Peter Agre won the 2003 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. He got a D in the subject in high school. You won't find many D students here, but you just might find the next Einstein, or Hemingway, or Charlie Parker. <laughs>